you hear about superstitions like if a black cat crosses your path, it's bad luck? Oh, really? I've got a black cat at home and nothing bad has happened. I don't buy into all that superstition stuff. Well, people used to think black cats were witches' friends. They believed they could bring bad luck. That's just silly. What about Friday the 13th? Some folks get all nervous about it. Yeah, it's a global superstition. They say 13 is unlucky, and Friday combined makes it worse. Nonsense. Numbers can't bring bad luck. And horseshoes over doors? What's that about? It's believed to bring good luck and keep away bad spirits. Hanging a horseshoe is an old tradition. Spirits? Seriously? I don't think a piece of metal can keep away spirits. And what's the deal with knocking on wood? It's like a jinx prevention. If you say something good, you knock on wood to keep it from going bad. It's an old belief. So I just tap on wood and everything stays good? Sounds too easy. What's next? Throwing salt over my shoulder. Yeah, some say it wards off bad luck. If you spill salt, toss a bit over your left shoulder. It's a superstition to blind the devil. Blind the devil with salt? This is getting weirder. I'll stick to my black cat and forget the rest. Your choice. Superstitions are different everywhere, but they sure make for interesting stories. Uh-oh, did you see that? I just bumped into the bathroom mirror and it shattered. Now I'm worried about seven years of bad luck. Whoa, calm down. Breaking a mirror doesn't automatically doom you. It's just an old superstition. But what if it's true? Seven years is a long time to be jinxed. Seven years of spilled milk, flat tires, and stubbed toes? No thank you. Maybe I should consult Madame Esmeralda down the street. She reads palms and might have some magic potion to ward off the bad luck. Hold on, don't go spending your life savings on palm readings just yet. Remember, superstitions are like shadows. They follow you if you let them. But if you turn around and face them head on, they usually disappear. Face them? How? Should I stare down the broken mirror shards and demand good luck? Sounds kind of intense. Haha, <laughs> not quite. Just don't let the broken mirror weigh you down. Focus on the present, make smart choices, and who knows, good things might just surprise you. Plus, haven't you heard? Some cultures see broken mirrors as a chance for a fresh start. Like shedding an old skin and entering a new phase. A fresh start, huh? Hmm, I like the sound of that. Maybe instead of fearing the bad luck, I can turn over a new leaf and make the next seven years the best ones yet. No more clumsily bumping into mirrors, for starters. Exactly. See, now you're talking, who needs magic potions when you have a positive attitude and a can-do spirit? Besides, we could always make lemonade out of lemons and use the mirror shards for a cool mosaic project. Mosaic project, you say? Now that's an idea I can get behind. Thanks for helping me see things in a new light, Ben. Maybe breaking the mirror wasn't such a bad omen after all. Remember. Bad luck is just a story you tell yourself. Rewrite the narrative, and you might just be surprised by the happy ending. Ichi Palms Some believe that an Ichi Palm means either receiving or spending money. Ever felt your hand tingle like it has a tiny secret message waiting to be decoded? In many cultures, that itch isn't just an itch, it's a chance to peek into the future with the help of superstitions. These old stories, passed down through generations, try to explain the unexplainable, like why the sky rumbles. So, when your palm whispers with that mysterious tingle, what does it mean? Some say an itchy left hand is a lucky charm, whispering about money coming your way, like finding a lost treasure or receiving a surprise gift. Perhaps your right hand is the one tingling? That might mean spending some of that unexpected cash on a treat for yourself or a friend. In other places, both hands tingling together is a sign of exciting adventures on the horizon, like starting a new hobby or making new friends. But wait, not all itchy palms bring good news. Some cultures believe they warn of arguments or tricky situations ahead, like a test you haven't studied for. These beliefs have been around for centuries when people use stories to explain things they didn't understand. Just like they imagined angry gods causing thunder, they used superstitions to explain the mysteries of their bodies, like tingling palms. So, next time that it starts, don't just dismiss it. 
Maybe it's a secret message from the world of superstitions waiting to be unraveled. But remember, these are just fun stories, not guarantees. True luck comes from hard work and a kind heart, no matter how much your palms might tingle. After all, even the most exciting adventure starts with your own brave steps, not an itchy hand. Getting out of bed on the wrong side it's believed that getting out of bed on the wrong side brings bad luck. Ever woken up feeling like everything goes wrong the moment you open your eyes? Feeling grumpy, like the whole day is jinxed? Some people say it's because they got out of bed on the wrong side. This means they started the day in a bad mood, and bad luck seems to follow them like a shadow. But guess what? This feeling probably has nothing to do with which side you climb out of bed from. This saying actually comes from old beliefs, where people thought what you did first thing in the morning could set the tone for your entire day. Maybe they thought waking up on the left side was unlucky, or perhaps they just noticed mornings where they felt grumpy often led to tricky situations. But in reality, your mood starts when you wake up, not how you get out. Maybe you didn't sleep well, or something stressful is on your mind. So, next time you feel cranky, don't blame the bed. Give yourself a pep talk, do something fun, and remember, you control your own happiness, not which side of the bed you use. It might be an old saying, but it's all for fun in the end. The best luck comes from hard work and being a positive person, no matter what side you wake up on. Do you believe in superstitions? What's your opinion about the superstitions? Bump into someone. Bump into someone means to unexpectedly and accidentally encounter or meet someone. It often implies a chance meeting with someone you didn't plan to see. For instance, if you run into a friend at the grocery store when you weren't aware they would be there, you can say you bumped into them. I didn't expect to bump into my old neighbor while on vacation. I never thought I'd bump into my boss at the art gallery over the weekend. What a surprise! Bump into something. When you bump into something, you make contact with it using your body, typically unintentionally. For example, if you're not paying attention and accidentally hit a table, you can say you bumped into it. I wasn't paying attention and accidentally bumped into the door. In the crowded hallway, he accidentally bumped into a fellow student carrying a stack of books. To ward off someone or something. To ward off means to keep away or push back something bad. It's like making a barrier to protect yourself from something you don't want, such as illness or bad luck. For instance, imagine using an umbrella to ward off rain, you're keeping it away from you. When studying, I use noise-canceling headphones to ward off distractions and stay focused. Eating fruits and vegetables can help ward off common colds and other illnesses. Some people believe that carrying a lucky charm can help ward off bad luck. Weigh someone or something down. To weigh someone or something down is like putting a heavy load on them, making them feel burdened or tired. It could be physical, like carrying a heavy bag, or emotional, like feeling sad or stressed. Imagine carrying a big backpack full of rocks. It's hard to move easily. When something weighs you down, it makes you feel heavy and makes everything a bit more difficult. The stress of exams can weigh me down, making it hard to focus on studying. Constantly watching negative news can weigh her down, affecting her mood. Carrying so many books can weigh you down during school. Try leaving some at home. <laughs>